Good morning! I am on my way to work. It is Friday. It's beautiful. 72 degrees here in Florida. And I wanted to talk this morning, since we're going into the weekend, while I'm recording this, about having a nap on Sunday. <laughs> such a silly video to make. Yesterday was my first day back to work after vacation for the holidays and I was sick for about half my vacation but it was fine. I got to relax and I still enjoyed my vacation. Um, time off. I didn't go anywhere. I just spent a lot of time with my family and um, my son. God, it was so much fun. So, but I'm back to work and a lot of naps as many as I could when I was on vacation and when I'm working I don't get to do that um, very often I miss that part of the reason I really miss staying home and being a stay-at-home mom is because of all the naps that I used to take <laughs> anytime they always would say you know sleep when the baby is sleeping and um, I did that as much as I could um, and I wore him on me in a, like a woven wrap or a tula as much as I could when we were both awake. I nursed him in that thing so I could clean the house and do whatever else I needed to do and then we would nap together. So now that I'm in work and working full time, 40 to sometimes 70 hours a week, especially when I'm trying to like go to the gym and volunteer and meet with my mentor and make these videos and like do a million other things that I love to do because I just love being an active and busy person. Um, but there's not a lot of time to slow down. So I, I do make it a point to have a nap every Sunday. The reason is I think that naps, especially for women, are different than sleeping and it's different from sleeping in too. Naps are for you emotionally and sleeping at night is for your body to rest and rejuvenate and recover. Naps are for your mind to rest and rejuvenate and recover. It's a little piece of self-care that I think is very important for women. Um, and then, you know, there's just nothing like putting a pot roast in your pressure cooker Sunday morning or the crock pot and then laying down and taking a nap at nap time with your children or your husband and waking up to the smell of a delicious home cooked dinner. You know, that used to happen to me all the time when I was a kid and it's one of my fondest memories of my father that he always had some kind of roast or something going on on Sundays when he was home and just the smell in the house and just the cozy warm feeling that you get being rested and taken care of um, is something that I try intentionally to recreate in my life every Sunday. So this has just started. I've, I've been doing it probably since the beginning of December um, and you know I probably missed a Sunday in there once um, but yeah so every Sunday I put it on my calendar. I told my husband I'm taking a nap. Sunday I'm taking a nap I need to have my nap my Sunday nap and um, it's it like I said it's for your emotional health and sleeping at night is for your physical health um, I don't know what else to say about that naps 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 I'm a big believer that <laughs> one of the big believers in the law of attraction and um, you know, that our thoughts create our reality for the most part. So one thing with naps and the law of attraction that you'll hear from other people, and I'm not the creator of this information, I, I, I think I would assume that Abraham Hicks was probably the first person to say to take a nap when you're in a bad mood. But basically, the logic is, um, you know, emotions get their own momentum behind them. If you think about a problem that you've had with a family member for years, um, and you know, 
they're close in relation to you and close in physical location to you and every time you see them you get this angry and resentful and upset feeling about them that kind of stuff has a lot of momentum it's been going on for a long time you get more and more upset every time you think about it and it's hard to create a different result when you have such a negative emotion that has so much momentum behind it um, and there's other tools and things you can do. A nap is not one for something like that. But for something like you wake up in the morning and, you know, maybe you forget to do your meditation or you don't have time to and you're busy and, you know, I'm running late right now. Um, and maybe, you know, you're worried about what's going to happen in the day or your husband or kids say something to you that really just rubs you the wrong way, makes you feel unappreciated or something like that something small happens that puts you in a, in a less than an ideal state of emotion. A nap or meditating is one of the best and first things that you should do to stop that vibration immediately. Because as soon as you take a nap and meditate, you slow everything back down and you give your mind a chance to pick a new thought. And all of our thoughts are what creates our emotions. Any emotion is backed behind a thought. Um, and so really taking that nap and stopping the momentum of those thoughts early on or meditating um, will give you the chance to start fresh, start new. And since it's the new year, what better way than to know how to start things new every time you need to. Take a nap, rest, play as much as you can. Um, and just remember that when you're happy, your children will be happy. Usually when your children are happy, you're happy. So life doesn't have to be as hard as we all make it out to be. We don't have to be angry and upset about all of the things that we're usually upset about. Just take it easy and just be happy and appreciative for the little things in life like this beautiful view and all this beautiful farmland that I'm driving through right now. I love that I get to drive through this farmland every morning on my way to work. You know, just there's things that we see every day that pass us by and we don't take the time to pay attention to them and appreciate them truly. Um, and we need to do more of that as often as you can. Just slow yourself down, bring yourself to the present moment and appreciate everything the abundance the grace the beauty everything that's around you appreciate yourself more get yourself feeling good as often as possible it's the only thing that you need to do find what feels good for you 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 because when you find what feels good for you you'll find your passion you'll find your um you know your source of income You'll find your lover, you'll find the family you always wanted, you'll find the car. I mean, once you are paying attention to how you feel, everything else will come. So that's my little short, little short video today about naps. Let me know how often you take naps. And I'm definitely not encouraging, you know, to, to sleep all day or to wake up and have a cup of coffee and then go back to bed. Try and have your Sunday nap and maybe try and limit it to that, maybe in three naps a week. Um, but you don't want to be stuck in living in your bed for your whole life either. You know, I've been there also, um, you know, towards the end of me staying home with, with Jack, I got into a really depressed state and there have been times while working where if I w would have been a stay-at-home mom I would have been sleeping the whole time um, and that's and that's not not okay and that's not a way to live your life it's definitely a sign of depression so if you do feel depressed you know seek out help from from professionals from your loved ones let people know how you feel um, but a, a, a good nap is a good thing keep moving forward and I love you very much. Have a wonderful